All right, welcome back. We are covering the mistakes that people make with their money. And next up is reverse dollar cost averaging, or as I like to call it, dollar cost ravaging. So let me ask you class, what is dollar cost averaging? What is dollar cost ravaging? And what is reverse dollar cost averaging? Can somebody answer that question for me, please? Yes, Johnny, how about you? Dollar cost averaging is a technique where you periodically purchase the same dollar amount of investments, whether the stock market is up or down. When it's up, your dollar buy more of the stock. Conversely, when the market is down, you get more shares. This approach can result in a lower average purchase price, and that's a good thing. However, when you start taking the money out, like when you're in retirement, putting this dollar cost averaging strategy in reverse can be very dangerous because you may have to sell more stocks when the market is a low point, and that is why you call it dollar cost ravaging. Thank you, Johnny. Excellent. Great class. All right, so here is the whole point. The strategies that work while you're accumulating money for retirement don't always work when you are in retirement. You have the accumulation phase of life, your investment life. You have the then controlled depletion in retirement. The money you, you leave work with, the money that you've accumulated during your working years, a 401k, a 403b, a, a lump sum available from your pension, after-tax investments, your home, the equity in your home, maybe money you receive as an inheritance, all these things kind of are with you and, and, and accumulate kind of like uh, um, the ocean coming in, the water coming in, they all then hit that beach of retirement. They all are accumulating, and then you, now, how do you get the income you need in retirement and make sure it lasts? Ah, that is the question. So one of the strategies that Johnny spoke so well to earlier, uh, excellent job, that he spoke to was this idea of dollar cost averaging. And the basic concept is that as you're putting money in, when the market goes down, you buy more. When the market goes up, you're buying less. So that gives you over time a lower purchase price. Now, that's fine when you're putting money in, but when you're ready to take it out, if you stay pedal to the metal, all your money in the market, you stay invested, and then you attempt to reverse the procedure and start drawing money out each month. And if the market goes down, now that's not a good thing because instead of buying more shares, guess what? You have to sell more shares. So really simple example. You've got a dollar and you, you need, you need, that's what the stock is worth and you need to sell it and the stock is only worth 60 cents like it might've been in 2008 when the stock market went down 40% your dollar stock is worth 60 cents. Well, guess what? If you need a dollar, you can't just sell one. You've got to sell more than one. And, that is, and, and is it a good time to sell that stock or a bad time? It's a bad time. Not only do you have to sell more shares, but you have to sell them at a lower price. You have to sell a little less than two shares to get the same dollar. So this is the risk. And that's why I call it dollar cost ravaging, because it will ravage your portfolio. Now, I can give you a more detailed example, and it's a, a very, very practical and real good example of what happened to some people during this decade of 2000 to 2009 that is often called the dead decade. The stock market was basically flat. In fact, it was down a little bit over that whole 10 year period. So for sake of ease of discussion and example purposes, Let's just say the market was flat. You know, 2000, 2001, 2002, the market was off about 47% cumulatively for that period of time. 2003 to 2007, it gained back. Then 2008 went down that 38%. And then in 08 and 09, it recovered. But point to point, flat. So let's say that you retired at the end of 1999. And remember, 1999 was one of those, that the tail end of that really good, long, strong bull market. So retiring at the end of 1999, you might've thought, things are going great. 
I'm going to leave my money and I'm going to draw from it because I hear, you know, there's this, there's this uh, uh, methodology I've heard about called the 4% safe withdrawal rate. I'll just draw 4% from my portfolio and I should be fine, right? That's what the pundits say. I heard somebody say it on television one time. They look good, had nice makeup, nice tie. They must know what they're talking about, right? So here's a, a, an example for you. So let's say that you retired at the end of 1999 with $300,000 that you kept in the stock market. And then you proceeded to draw this 4% safe withdrawal rate, which would mean 4% on 300,000. Let's do the math, that's $12,000 per year or $1,000 a month. So you start out drawing $1,000 a month in January of 2000. You then proceed to continue to do that. You stick to your guns because you've heard that investing in the market and this 4% rule only works if you stick to your guns and you're gonna keep drawing the money out. Now let's see where you are, fast forward. I'll skip over um, the torturous explanations of all of those details during 2000 and 2009, all those turbulent and tumultuous periods of time in there. And you've got the dead decade from point to point. No growth. How did you do? Well, let's see. You took $1,000 a month for 10 years. That is $120,000 you withdrew from the 300 that you put in. So you took back 120,000 of your own money. So far, so good. Next, you had, ready? You had $72,000 in losses. What? How did I lose all that? The market was flat. Ah, but you were selling more shares when the market was down and that caused you to incur a lot of losses. You were having to sell and liquidate at a bad time. And with the 72,000 pulled out plus your 120 of your own money, you've got $108,000 left at the end of the 10 year period to try to see you through the rest of your retirement. Now, if you said, well, enough of that, I'm just gonna cash it all in, you'd have 108,000, that would see you through maybe another, I don't know, maybe another, uh, what's that, another nine years of income? Not a good plan. All right, so let's say instead, that you had taken some of the money and put it into something more conservative. Maybe you've heard that it's a good idea to not draw money from something going up and down, up and down, up and down. And you draw your income that you need from something much more secure, you still keep some of your money in the market. Let me fast forward. You still take out the 120,000, but instead of losing 72,000, you would have only seen a $28,000 loss. Why? Well, the market still went down during that period of time. And what else? Well, you'd have $152,000 left over. You'd have $44,000 left over, more than you would have had if you had taken that more aggressive, more dependent approach with the market. So 44,000 buys you another four years you wouldn't have. So again, the idea is that you're not putting yourself in a place where you're having to draw money from something that goes up and down and you let the market do what the market's going to do. They're going to go up and down and you don't draw money from things going up and down. If you can do that, you can protect yourself much better than staying all in all the time because the 4% withdrawal rate and these strategies that are dependent on the market only work if the market's always going up. Take all this in consideration and you'll plan stronger.